In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own 3D printed stamp using GeoGebra and Tinkercad. So here I'm in GeoGebra. I'm not signed in, so I'm going to go ahead and fix that. I'm going to hit sign in and then use my existing Google account. And if I hadn't already created my account, I'll have to go through a couple steps to create it, but I already have. Um, once you've created it, uh, you may not be logged in, so you want to make sure your initial here shows up to actually show that you are logged in. So if you created an account, make sure you sign in a second time using Google to actually show it here. So here in the uh, geometry palette, I'm going to select more to give all of my options here. Um, not really sure what I want. I know I have to have some parallel lines, so let me start with a segment here. And I'm going to give it a slope of one fourth. I also know I need some perpendicular lines, so uh, if this has a slope of actually four over one, not one fourth, then the perpendicular slope should be down one over four. So there should be opposite reciprocals. So let me go ahead and give a second parallel segment. And for both of those, I'm going to create a perpendicular here. Down one over four, down one over four. Okay, so I have the beginnings of a, of a logo here or, or some kind of symbol. I'm not really sure where it's going right now. Let me add some, some curves. That'll make it uh, interesting. Don't really like the way that looks. Let's try that. Maybe, maybe an arc here as well. And for good measure, let's close it out. I'm not really sure what this is. It looks sort of like a Koopa shell, something like that. Um, let me start going down that route. I've got uh, two pair, a pair of parallel lines. I have perpendiculars to those parallels, and I still need a transversal, which is a line that crosses two or more other lines. So let me add an additional segment here, like so. So that line will cross these two and create a transversal. All right, so let's say I'm ready to export. Um, I've got my minimum requirements here, nothing too fancy, but uh, this is where your creativity can sort of come into play. But for me, this is good enough. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and export this image. That way I can do my calculations later regarding the, uh, the slope. So I'm gonna hit the menu icon here and hit export image and download. So now here I have this file uh, as a screenshot. If I were to actually print this, I'm going to need this to be a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to turn off the axes and the grid. And I'm going to turn off these points. Now, I don't have very many points. Some of you will have a lot of points. Uh, but for me, uh, it'll be fairly straightforward. Just turn off all of the blue dots. Now, there's, this may be quite tedious if you have quite a few. Uh, just be patient and go through them. You'll eventually have a nice, clean logo. I'm going to center this as much as I can. And I'm going to download a second time, this time the clean PNG file. So this file is really only temporary. It's going to be used to make a vector file. So unfortunately, GeoGebra's vector software does not, uh, download does not properly convert um, for Tinkercad. So the workaround is to go to this URL right here, bit.ly slash link SVG. And I'm going to ignore the ads here. I'm not going to focus on those. I'm just going to hit down here to choose file. And I'm going to choose the PNG that I just got. So it's going to be under downloads and this one right here. And I'm going to go down to hit convert file. And it should download automatically. If not, I can hit this download button right here. Don't hit any of the other ones. Um, let's see, there we are. So now that's an SVG file. So this time we're ready to go to Tinkercad and actually turn this thing into a 
three-dimensional objects. So Tinkercad.com. Don't have an account? Uh, you'll want to sign in with your Google account. So hit sign in using social providers, Google, and I should still be signed in from earlier. And now I have signed in. So we hit create new design. And I'm going to import in the SVG that I just created, or downloaded rather. So choose file, I'm going to choose this SVG right here. The pixels are uh, too big, the dimensions are, so the workspace is 1000 uh, cubic millimeters, so I'm going to change the width to 1000. And it auto adjusts for the proportions here. Now, this will still be way too big, but uh, it just is a way to bring the art onto the palette. There we go. So if I hold the uh, mouse uh, center button here, I can kind of pan and I can scroll the wheel to, uh, to zoom. Oops, that's a little bit too much. My mouse is pretty sensitive. Um, if you recall, your, your requirements are that this thing be 40 by 40. So right now the dimensions are way too big. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold one of these corners and hold shift and bring this down proportionally until it is a bit smaller. So right now it's still 117. Let's carry this over here. It's uh, 54. So that's about 40. That'll work. Now the thickness here is uh, a maximum of 10 millimeters. So I'm going to hold the left button and sort of pan. Uh, you can also rotate this cube here. This might be easier uh, for some of you. I like to use the mouse to its full potential. So if I click the object and click this point right here, it'll allow me to adjust the Z dimension or the height. So I'm going to adjust that to 10 millimeters. There we go. So all I need now is a flat backing plate to actually adhere to the, um, the wooden block. So I'm going to drag on a box onto the palette, and it asks for dimensions. So I know the length needs to be 40. It needs to be a square box, so the width has to be the same. And I want the height to be smaller than my stamp, obviously, so I'm going to make that 4 millimeters. I could probably get away with even 3. I'll stick to four for now. And you'll notice it's not in the wrong, uh, not in the right place at the moment. Um, I could try, all, try some trial and error to get it in the right place. But if I rotate the uh, view cube here to the top view, and then if I select everything, you'll notice this align feature has appeared. So I can hit align, and then it gives me some alignment dots. So I want the centers of each one to be aligned. And there we go. Now you'll notice there is some overhang here, so it looks as though my um, my actual logo is still a bit large. So I'm going to click that again and shrink it now that I have my backing plate. Now it's out of alignment, so I'm going to go back and do the alignment again. And while I have them both selected, I'm going to actually group them together so that they become one object. And I don't want that gray color. Mind you, the color here is sort of meaningless because it's a uh, it's going to be printed on filaments, but it looks nice as red, so I'll leave it like that. And there we go. And the good thing about Tinkercad is it, it saves automatically, so I know this thing is uh, is secure. Um, that being said, I do want to give it a good name here, so we'll just call this um, Random Stamp Number Three. And in order to get an STL file to actually properly 3D print. I'm going to hit export, STL, and this will download as an STL file that you can then upload into Google Classroom to get printed. So hopefully this gives you all the steps you'll need for actually making your own 3D printed stamp from a geometric design in GIS.